welcome to the DIY Audio Guy YouTube channel. For today's adventure, we're going to turn this design into this enclosure. This is going to be a really fun build. It's a whole lot more than your standard square box. It's going to be tricky to put together, and I'm going to show you the right way to use pocket screws for a subwoofer enclosure. For this project, I'm going to be using 3 quarter inch birch veneered plywood. This is not Baltic birch that people go on about. This is just the stuff you can get at your local home center. I was really pleased with the material. I didn't see any noticeable voids and it had a really nice look to it. For this project, I'm gonna need a top, a bottom, a front and a back, plus a second baffle, a piece for the window brace and a piece for the port support. Speaking of the ports, I grabbed some inexpensive ports from Parts Express. These were a dollar each. I'll make sure you get a link down in the description. They didn't come with a lot of specifications, so I had to make some test cuts with my router and my circle jig to figure out what size opening I needed to get a great fit on these port flares. I'll give you a link to these port flares down in the description. Now these ports weren't long enough to get the tuning frequency I was shooting for, so I made some rings to lengthen the ports, and I went ahead and connected those rings to this port support right here. If you'll watch the video to the end, I'll show you how I made the rings and the support. So now I'm mocking it all up just to make sure that my measurements are perfect. I like doing that. I always want to make sure everything's going to fit before I start slapping on the wood glue. This piece right here is going to be a window brace and that window brace is going to also hold the port brace in place. The process for making a window brace is pretty straightforward. It's just time consuming. I used a jigsaw to rough cut the windows. If you do a good job with the jigsaw, you can stop there, but I wanted to make sure things were nice and smooth. So I used some straight pieces of scrap and some double-sided carpet tape in order to make a frame around each window. And then I just used a flush trim bit on the router in order to get some nice straight lines. I follow that up with a roundover bit to smooth out the airflow around the brakes. Check out this cool tool right here. It's one of my secret weapons. It's a great way to fix those little mistakes and mishaps that happen along the way. When I was finished, I realized I'd set my roundover bit a little bit too aggressively and I was left with this really nasty ridge around the inside of that window. So I grabbed the Dremel, threw on one of those sanding barrels, and I got rid of that ridge. I've had this Dremel for years. It's a cordless model. I absolutely love it. It's always great for little things like this. You never know when you're going to need a tool like this. I recommend picking one up. Oh, hey, I need to give a shout out to my newest patrons over on Patreon. Mac, El Fuego, and The Third Era. If you don't know The Third Era, he's got a channel right here on YouTube. I'll give you a link to his channel down in the description. These guys help me out with a direct contribution to the channel and for as little as $3 a month, you can also support DIY audio content right here on YouTube. Patrons also get behind the scenes access and tons of extras. Now, if you can't afford to join me over on Patreon, that's all right. I'm still glad you're here. I'm still glad you're watching the videos. You can support DIY audio content by hitting that like button, hitting that subscribe button, and sharing this video with people that might be interested in what I'm doing here on YouTube. Hey, check out these corners right here. They're rounded off. That's just one of many of the really cool design elements in this build. So make sure you keep watching so you can catch all the little quirks and features. So I'm gonna measure in an inch and a half from the corner of the front. I'm gonna make a mark and then I'm gonna grab this ring that's a leftover ring from when I was working on the front dash build in my old Dodge truck. I'll give you a link to that video up here. And it turns out this ring is almost exactly perfect for what I'm trying to do. So I'm just gonna mark that off. Over the years, I've made various rings like this of various sizes and I've held on to all of them because you never know when you're gonna need them. This one really came in handy. Now I'm gonna grab the jigsaw and I'm gonna put a fine wood blade in that jigsaw so I'll do less damage to the very thin veneer. I don't wanna mess up that nice birch on the outside of this plywood. So I'm just gonna trim off the corner a little bit before I take it over to the router. Back 
back over to the router where I'm gonna use this wooden ring as a template to round off the front of this enclosure. So we're just gonna stick some tape on it and stick that down and run the guide bearing along the ring. And we're gonna get a nice smooth cut. Now you can see in this shot that I've already rounded off the other side. When I get done with this piece right here, I'm just gonna use some more of that double-sided tape and stick this piece to the bottom and do the roundovers on the bottom. So I've broken down all the plywood. I've got my brace ready to go. I've got the port assembly ready to go. Got the baffle cutouts all finished. There's not much cutting left to do. And behind me, you can see I've got the box mocked up. Let's zoom in close and take a look at that box. This is why I like filming with a GoPro. It allows you to get up close and personal with the action. Let's take a dive into this enclosure and let's see the port and the port assembly. It's pretty complicated. It's gonna be really tricky to put all this together. There's a lot of pieces. You can see right here that I cut an extra hole inside that port brace and around it over the edges for the airflow. It's gonna be a really neat box when it's done. Now the birch veneer on this plywood looks absolutely fantastic and one of the goals of this build is to not mess up that fantastic look. So for this enclosure I'm going to be using pocket hole screws. Pocket hole screws are really popular in woodworking and you're beginning to see them quite a bit in subwoofer enclosures especially with plywood enclosures like this. But I'm telling you what y'all there are people out there who are doing their pocket hole screws wrong. Let me show you what I'm talking about. If you've never used a pocket screw, let's zoom in close on one of these things so you can see what it's all about. What you're going to notice is that it looks just like a regular screw until we turn it over a little bit. Let's see if you can see it kind of glinting in the light. It's got this little notch cut into it to help it cut into the wood. That's a common feature on a lot of wood screws, but a pocket hole screw is not a normal wood screw and you can't use a normal wood screw in pocket holes. Let's turn this thing around. And what you can see right here is there's a flat surface right there for the screw to sit inside the pocket. You don't have to buy these special pocket hole screws from Craig as long as you buy screws that have those two features. You can't use a normal wood screw. Here's a normal wood screw and as you can see it's got this tapered head. That tapered head won't sit down in the pocket. That's made for countersinking. One of the beauties of using pocket screws is you can hide the screws. Well, you can hide the screws sometimes, and you've got to be very careful about the way you drill your pocket holes and drive in your screws. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Right here we have an example of what a joint might look like on a subwoofer enclosure. And what we're tempted to do is to go inside the enclosure, drill out our pocket hole, and insert the pocket screw from the inside of the enclosure. But what you're going to notice happens, look right here at the amount of material the screw has to bite into. There's not much material there, it's hard to get a grip. So that is not the proper way to use a pocket hole screw. The correct way to do it is to come in from the other side where you've got more material to bite into, like this right here. Now you can probably get away with doing it the wrong way if you're really careful, but you gotta keep that in mind. You run the risk of tearing out the edge of your plywood and ruining your enclosure if you drive the screws in the wrong way. Now the other thing to remember is as long as you've got enough material for it to bite into, you're going to be just fine. So if your joint has an overhang like this, it doesn't matter what side you drill the pocket on. And I'm going to make use of that trick right there to hide most of my pocket screws. Now the back of my enclosure is going to sit flush, so all of those pocket screws are going to be visible, but it's also going to be on the back, and that's going to be turned toward the wall, and no one's going to see it. I went ahead and drilled all those pocket holes off camera and now I'm going to start assembling the box. It's real important that you clamp everything down when you're using pocket screws because if you don't, as you drive the screw, that screw is going to cause the wood to shift and things won't line up square and even. Here I'm using a fancy clamp that Craig makes that actually fits down inside the pocket hole. You don't have to do that. You can use bar clamps or any kind of corner clamp. I'm going to add a couple more bar clamps to this to hold it together while I'm actually driving the pocket screw. Then it's just a matter of going around the box and installing all the pocket screws.
Off camera, I attached the ports to the port support and to the baffle. I just used five minute epoxy for that. Now I'm gonna put a little bit of glue on the port support and on the baffle and slide that assembly into the enclosure and I'm gonna use my window brace in order to space everything out to make sure things are lined up perfectly. Gonna go ahead and glue up that window brace while I'm at it. And so the entire brace and port assembly will kind of slide into the box all together as one big piece. Here's what it looks like all together. I'm gonna start off by driving some pocket screws through the brace into the baffle and that's going to secure the brace to the baffle and then I'm going to do the same thing to the back of the box and that'll make sure that my spacing front to rear is exactly perfect. Next I'm going to take a few more pocket screws and use that to connect the baffle to the side of the box. You can see I've got two pockets screwed in at the top of the baffle right here. I screw the sides of the brace into the sides of the box. Next I grab a couple of brads and I drive some brads into the window brace to secure the window brace to the port brace. Now with the box turned over, I'm gonna slather on some glue so I can affix the bottom of the box to the enclosure. The design calls for a half inch overhang on the right and the left, so I've got my combination square and I'm going around the box to make sure my overhang is perfect. Now that everything is lined up perfect, I'm gonna clamp it all down and I'm gonna use some more pocket screws in the back of the enclosure to affix the bottom. Since this is going to be the bottom, I don't have to worry about nail holes, so I'm gonna mark off a line for my brad nails, clamp everything down nice and tight, grab my brad nailer, drive in a few brads, and that's gonna secure the bottom of the enclosure. Just like the bottom of the enclosure, the top of the enclosure has a half inch overhang on the right and the left. So I'm gonna use my clamps here to get it nice and tight and secure so it doesn't drift on me as I drive the pocket screws. These screws are gonna attach the back of the enclosure to the top of the enclosure. Now I don't wanna drive any brad nails into the top of the enclosure because that part's gonna be exposed and I wanna make sure that I take really good care of that really nice birch veneer on this plywood. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clamp all this together and let it sit overnight so the glue can set. I'm really excited about this enclosure. It looks amazing so far and the finish is going to be absolutely spectacular. If you want to see the finish on this enclosure, you've got to hit that subscribe button right there because that's going to be the next adventure. If you want to see how I built my port tubes, click on this video right here. If you want to see how I glued up my double baffle, click on this video right here. I'm the DIY Audio Guy, and I'll see you on the next adventure.